All right, in our slide 71 example on our chapter 18 PowerPoint, we're going to be calculating several points on a weak acid strong base titration curve. So the question states a 40 milliliter sample of 0.1 molar nitrous acid is titrated with 0.2 molar potassium hydroxide. And they want us to calculate A, the volume required to reach the equivalence point, B, the pH after adding 5 milliliters of potassium hydroxide, C, and the pH at one half of the equivalence point. So I'm gonna go through and walk us through how to calculate um, each of these aspects of this titration curve. So first, wants us to figure out volume um, needed to reach pH equivalence point. Now, it's not asking us to actually calculate the pH of the equivalence point, just the volume of base that we need. And so we technically learned how to do this in our first semester in our um, aqueous solution molarity chapter. So first thing I'm going to do is write out my equation, make sure I understand the stoichiometry that I'm working with. So I'm reacting potassium hydroxide with nitrous acid. We're going to exchange um, some protons and hydroxide and we're going to form water and potassium nitrate. Oops, that does not have a charge, sorry. So this is technically already balanced, so it's just a one-to-run ratio. So now, part A is asking us to figure out the volume, and we're going to calculate milliliters, required to reach that equivalence point. So it's basically a glorified stoichiometry problem, which we technically already know how to do. So I'm looking for milliliters of potassium hydroxide. And I'm going to start with my volume of my acid and use that to multiply by its molarity to get into moles. So I have 40 milliliter sample of my 0.1 molar nitrous acid. And so I'm going to take my volume, change it already into liters. So 40 milliliters is 0.04 liters. And I'm going to write out the line. And I'm going to multiply that volume by my molarity of my nitrous acid, which happens to be 0 0.1 moles per liter. And that's nitrous acid. So now at this point, I've canceled out my volume. I'm in moles of nitrous acid. And I'm going to ultimately end up with volume of potassium hydroxide. So here's where I need to look at the stoichiometry of my equation and say that one mole of nitrous acid reacts with one mole of potassium hydroxide. We don't have any coefficients written out in front of our equation. So that's going to cancel out moles of nitrous acid, and I'm going to be left in moles of potassium hydroxide. Now, final step is to basically use potassium, hydroxide, potassium hydroxide's molarity to figure out its volume. So in the problem, it says we titrate with 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to divide by the molarity and that's going to leave me in unit of volume. Now the last step I can tack on at the end here. I technically want my answer in milliliters so I'm going to multiply 
by a thousand. So if I multiply all the way across, I should come up with 20 milliliters of potassium hydroxide needed to reach my equivalent point. So 20 milliliters of potassium hydroxide needed to reach the equivalence point. That's part A. Part B oops, says that we want to figure out the pH after adding 5 milliliters of potassium hydroxide. So this calculation, um, slightly different than our first one, we're now calculating pH and not an amount. And that beeping you hear in the background would be my Instapot telling me that dinner's ready. Um, but I'm gonna finish this problem first. So for part B, pH after adding five milliliters of potassium hydroxide, this is going to be, because we're adding something, a base to something else, it's going to be a before and after equation. So first things first, I'm gonna figure out the mole amounts that I have of both my acid and my base. Because remember, you can only put mole amounts, not molarity, into a before and after chart. So first, I'm gonna figure out the moles I have starting with of nitric acid sorry, not nitric, nitrous this time. And that's just the 40 milliliter sample of 0.1 molar nitrous acid. So I'm gonna multiply my molarity times my volume. Liters will cancel, I'll be left in moles gives me 0 0.004 moles nitrous acid. Second, I'm going to figure out my moles of base, my moles of potassium hydroxide. So I'm using a 0.2 molar solution. And in this portion of my calculation, I've added five milliliters, so that's 0 0.005 liters. So that liter are going to cancel, and I got 0 0.001 moles of potassium hydroxide. So now I'm going to write my before and after chart. So first thing, I need to write my equation. And in this case, we're just concerned with the reactants reacting in this um, reaction that seemed like redundant but basically we're gonna ignore the um, spectator ions <coughs> so I am reacting my hydroxide my potassium hydroxide in this case with nitric I keep saying nitric nitrous acid to produce water and the nitrite ion. And then I have my before, my change, and my after. So for my before, I have 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide and 0 0.004 moles of nitrous acid, no water, and I have no nitrite ion concentration or moles to speak of. So now, for the change part, we look at the two amounts we have, figure out which is the smaller, and that's what we subtract or add to all of our things that are changing. So remember, reactants are going to be consumed, so we're subtracting and products are being made, so we're adding. 
So my smallest mole amount is the 0 0.001. So it's going to be minus 0 0.001 minus 0 0.001. And then on our product side, plus 0 0.001. So that leaves me with no hydroxide, 0 0.003 moles of acid and 0 0.001 moles of its conjugate base. All right, so now we have our mole amounts of our acid and its conjugate base. Our next step in our journey to calculating pH is to convert both of these back into molarity. So in order to do that, we now have had a change in volume we have to add the two volumes together and then divide our moles by our new volume to get our new molarity. So we started off with 40 milliliters of nitrous acid and we have since added five milliliters of potassium hydroxide. So our total volume is 0.04 liters plus 0.005 liters for both of these. So if you divide, we get new molarities of 0 0.0667 molar and 0 0.022 molar. So now our last step to figuring out the pH of this solution. Since we don't have any excess base, we just have an acid and its conjugate base, this is technically a buffer. So we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus over HA. So for nitrous acid, the pKa happens to be 3.34, and it technically wasn't given to us in this problem, but you can look it up um, on a previous slide or in chapter 17. So for our calculation, pH is equal to 3.34 plus log of our A minus concentration, which in this case is our NO2 minus, so 0 0.022. And on top, or sorry, not on top, on bottom is our acid concentration, which in this case is the nitrous acid concentration, which is 0 0.0667. So if we take that. and do the log, we get 0 0.48, actually negative 0 0.48. And if you take that, subtract it from the pKa, we get that the pH is equal to 2.86. And that's the pH for part B of this question. Final step, part C. says to calculate pH at the one-half equivalence point. And this is actually the easiest calculation to set up on a pH curve because at the halfway to the equivalence point, basically we've added half the amount of base in order to reach that final equilibrium or that final equivalence point, the calculation is simply pH is equal to the pKa. And we already figured out what the pKa of nitrous acid is. Acid is the pKa is 3.34. So therefore, the pH halfway to our equivalence point 
is also equal to 3.34. And that is parts A, B, and C.